back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today is Friday and what a week it has been for me. Uh, if you follow along at all, you know I had some uh, frozen pipe issues. Uh, luckily for me, my son is a plumber and was able to mitigate those, although he had to make three trips here from over in Coeur d'Alene. So um, I'm thankful that that is taken care of. And then on Wednesday, we got dumped on with about 10 inches of snow. So I spent my entire day uh, shoveling and resting and shoveling and resting. <laughs> so kind of took away uh, the bulk of my Wednesday, unfortunately. But yesterday, I was able to get a couple projects done that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, they're a little bit more bulky items so that I'm super glad to have out of my kitchen and I can't wait to share them with you. So uh, without further ado, let's get to today's projects. My first project is this pretty old wood lamp that I've had sitting on a shelf for some time that's definitely been in the way and I'm so glad to finally have it finished. The first thing I wanted to do was cover up the brass portion of this lamp. Reason being is I wanted to distress and I didn't want to distress most of it back to the beautiful uh, rich brown wood tone and then have some of it distressed back to the brass. So I chose the closest paint color to the wood that I could get and that was layered chocolate by DIY. I ended up painting the bottom portion of the lamp with two coats of the layered chocolate and then let it sit to dry. And then once that was done and the paint was nice and dry, I took Big Top and I just went ahead and sealed the paint. Reason being is that when I go to distress, the water would reactivate the layered chocolate and I would end up still distressing right back to that brass. And I didn't want that, so uh, it's best that I seal my paint first and that will help alleviate that issue. Then it was on to painting the wood and for this piece I chose DIY's Farm Fresh. This is another one of my favorite colors by DIY. It's a little bit darker and richer than Apothecary, but it's still really springy in its look. But the nice thing is, is it transitions well into fall and it can also be a very pretty color for winter as well. So I did put two good coats of Farm Fresh all over the base part of this lamp before I went ahead and distressed it. I let the paint dry first and then I grabbed my damp shop towel and went in and started distressing back to some of that beautiful uh, wood tone that was underneath the paint. I love this look. I know there are some who don't like distressing and you can absolutely skip this step. But for me, this highlights all of the beautiful detail in this piece and really makes it shine. While I was there, I went ahead and cleaned up a couple places where I'd gotten paint that I didn't want it, like the cord. Uh, and then I moved on to sealing my paint. And as you know, DIY paint is clay-based and can be reactivated with water. And so it's very important that you always, always seal your DIY paint. For this, I decided to go with wax. And so I am starting here with a coat of DIY's clear wax. And then I am just brushing that on in a good thin layer you know not too thick you don't want it clumpy and you don't actually see the wax when you're done waxing it uh, and then I just take my shop towel a dry shop towel and lightly wipe back any excess once I was done with that I did go over it with some dark wax this is the DIY's dark wax I thinned it out a little bit with some mineral spirits just so that it would go on a little more smoothly I didn't want it super gunky and I didn't want it super dark. I just wanted to add a little bit of age and patina to this piece. And so I'm just going over everything with a light coat of that dark wax. And then again, using my shop towel to wipe back any excess wax. Once I was finished with the dark wax and happy with how my lamp was looking, I went ahead and replaced the shade and then this piece is finished. And I really love how it came out. Thank you. 
My next project is a piece that I have literally been kicking around my kitchen. I can't tell you how many times I've stumbled over this thing sitting on the floor. And I had really been tossing around a million different ideas on what I wanted to do with it. And what I finally came up with was that I was going to paint the iron. Now, normally when I say I'm going to paint metal, it means I'm going to take it outside and give it a good coat of spray paint. But for this piece, I decided I would, for my very first time, try to paint the metal with DIY paint. So this is a new thing for me. And uh, I was excited to try it a little bit nervous. The thing I love about DIY paint, though, is if I absolutely hated it, I knew I was just going to soak it in my sink and wash all the paint back off of it. So I wasn't too terribly worried. Once I got started, though, I really was loving how it looked. Now, I am using a chip brush for this and I'm using DIY's crinoline paint and the reason I'm using a chip brush is because I really didn't want 100% full coverage. I still wanted a little peak of that metal to come through. I wanted this to have that shabby chic old time worn kind of feel to it so I really wasn't worried about 100% coverage. So I went over with one coat just kind of brushing it on uh everywhere. Now this is a three dimensional project, which meant I had to paint it on one side, then flip it around, paint the other side, do the bottoms and then check the tops to make sure I got paint in all of the places. Uh, and then once that was done and I had gone over the whole piece once, I did go back and pounce a little bit more paint in areas just to give it a little bit more coverage in some places. Now, this took me about an hour <laughs> of painting just to get it to this point. And I kept rushing and then I thought, you know, just slow down and enjoy this process. Uh, and it was kind of fun and very relaxing. And I, I really love how it came out. So I'm thankful I tried it. Then I took the shelves and I grabbed them and gave them uh, two coats of crinoline uh, on the top and then a coat of crinoline on the bottom as well uh, and made sure to do all the sides as well. Uh, and then while they dried, I went ahead and sealed my crinoline paint on the metal. For that, I'm using wax. I just thought this would be a relatively easy uh, solution to sealing it rather than taking it outside and spraying um a clear coat on it or trying to get big top in all of the little nooks and crannies on this. Uh, my bigger brush tends to get into little places pretty easily. And so I just went over it very carefully, again, making sure that I got wax into all of the little uh, places of metal and then wiping back the excess with a shop towel as I went. This again was a little lengthy process, but I absolutely love the look of the wax over the crinoline paint and I am really really loving the paint on this iron. Once I had the shelf completely sealed, I was able to set that aside and then go back to the uh, shelving, the wood shelf part of this project and put another coat of paint on the sides and the top of it, getting ready for some beautiful decoupage paper. Uh, I did, like I said, paint the bottom of these shelves as well, but for some reason didn't manage to get any footage of that. Once they were dry, I went ahead and measured them and then it was on to the decoupaging process. Now, I am super excited about the paper I chose. This is an older one by Redesign with Prima that I have in my stash. I'm really trying to work through some of the things that I have sitting around in my cottage in my stash so that uh, when the newer stuff comes out, I can actually uh, focus on that. So this one is called Botanical Imprint. It's absolutely gorgeous, has beautiful colors in it, uh, just the beautiful butterflies. It's very feminine and pretty and perfect for any kind of a shabby chic uh, installation. So I loved it for this piece. Now, as per usual, I cut my pieces out just a little bit bigger than the pieces of wood. And then I'm using DIY's liquid patina to uh, 
adhere my paper down and I'm just putting one good even coat of the liquid patina starting on one end with a starter strip uh, laying my paper down and kind of smoothing it into the liquid patina and then working my way down uh, the shelf until it's completely down and then going over it with another really good coat of liquid patina now with the uh, paper like this from redesign it's definitely a thicker more fibrous paper you need just a little bit more of of the liquid patina over the top to uh, really get in there into all those uh, fibers and seal your piece. The key is just making sure it's a nice smooth coat and that you don't have a bunch of liquid patina standing on top of the paper. So I did that second shelf and then they were done and ready to sit aside to dry. And once they were completely dry, I grabbed a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and just with a downward sweeping motion went around all the edges of my shelves and removed the excess decoupage paper. It's a very simple process, but you really do need to make sure that your liquid patina is 100% dry before you try this. Otherwise, you're just going to tear your poor paper. Once that was done, I went over the exposed portions of the shelf that I had not sealed yet with some DIY Big Top just to make sure that my paint was sealed all over. And I am simply just adding one good coat of the DIY Big Top to the bottom and the sides of both of my shelves. Once that was done, I set them aside to dry again before I finally got to reassemble my shelf. For this, I grabbed my handy dandy Makita and drilled in all of my screws and then this little shelf was finally finished. I absolutely love how it came out and I will definitely use DIY paint to paint metal again in the future. you guys think of my projects for today i hope you liked them and if you enjoyed the video please remember to give it a thumbs up i so appreciate that if you haven't already i would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then just hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything and don't forget to comment below and let me know which of the two projects your favorite was today for me probably the shelf i'm absolutely in love with the fact that the metal part turned out as well as it did uh, honestly that was a little bit of an experiment on my part because I have another piece in my kitchen it's been there for a long time uh, that I've had absolutely no idea what to do with and now that I know that I like the painted metal I have a million different ideas going on in my head so I'm really happy about that uh, anyway for Tuesday gosh darn for Tuesday <laughs> I am going to have a couple more projects finished for you I've already got them sitting on my table so I definitely hope you'll join me for those uh, just a reminder any of the paint products you saw me use in today's video can be purchased through my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com uh, I have brand new uh, redesigned with Prima uh, spring release uh, items on their way they have been shipped and they're coming uh, so I apologize for the use of some older things that aren't actually available on my website but I do have quite a good selection there so definitely check that out uh, but I can't wait to show you guys the spring items and then oh my gosh the Easter <laughs> so um, I'm definitely gonna be ordering some of that as well anyway you guys Thank you, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate you, and I hope you'll be back here to join me for another thrift flip on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.